When I was in year nine or 10, I remember getting a report card back from school. And this report card had like a grading system that wasn't nine to one. You know, like nine to one you get in GCSEs. This wasn't the same. This had an E for excellence, M for like doing okay in school and B for doing below. I remember getting that and I got, I think three Bs and a couple of Ms and I think I got like two Es. So for the next set of mocks, I vowed to myself that I was gonna get the best grades possible. However, there was a problem. I revised like a dumbass. I remember when mocks were coming round, I, I, I would take out my like writing book and my notes and then I would get my notes on one side and get the textbook in the middle and I would just rewrite the notes I had written in class. Now I had thought at the time I was doing something like really groundbreaking. I was really neatly copying the notes into my other notebook and I was like drawing the diagrams of the microscope and like labeling key parts. And I, re I remember going around and showing my friends about how I'm gonna get the best grades. But when the exam eventually came along, I couldn't remember anything. Like I, I would sit there in the exam, but because I used like dumbass revision techniques and I didn't know how memorization actually worked, I, I couldn't remember anything. All I could remember was like two or three questions. And I got like really, really average grades in that, in that mock. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a summary of what I did wrong and how you can improve your memorization skills. This is basically the video I wish I had in year nine or 10. Before I explain to you all of the hacks and tips for getting good memorization skills, I need to explain to you how memorization of content actually works. Now, a lot of YouTubers online have made like full length guides, like active recall and all of this bullshit, but I'm gonna give you like the bro science simplified version of how memorization actually works. So memorization works like this, right? There is two ways to memorize content. There's active recall, remember this, there's active recall and there's passive recall. Active recall is the good kind and passive recall is something you shouldn't be doing. Passive recall is stuff like rereading textbooks, like highlighting the textbook and like rewriting notes. And basically what this is, is if I was to simplify this in like gym terminology, if you go to the gym to go and build muscle, right? Imagine you go to the gym and you start running or imagine you go to the gym and you start lifting weights, but then you stop when you get tired. This is the same as passive recall. In passive recall, the actual revision technique you're doing isn't anything stimulating in your brain. When you like reread the textbook, you're not actually like testing or like making it hard for yourself in your brain. So your brain never actually grows from that. And this is opposite to the good kind of like revision technique we need to do, which is called active recall. Active recall is basically when you test yourself on the content. It's basically like going to the gym and lifting up the heavy weights until you can't anymore. These include stuff like Anki, which is like a flashcard application, or like doing past papers. And there's other stuff I'm gonna explain in this video that's gonna help with your memorization skills. But basically active recall is what you wanna do and not passive recall. I'm gonna put a, like a PDF thing on, on screen here, listing all, out all of like the passive recall techniques and all of the active recall techniques. But honestly, like loads and loads of students are dumbasses and they don't know how to revise. But basically what you wanna do is minimize the amount of passive recall you do and then maximize the amount of testing yourself on the content that you do. This brings me on to the first memorization technique, which is understanding content. Understanding content is really, really important when you, when you need to memorize stuff, right? When you try to memorize something, it's really hard to memorize it if you don't understand what's in it. If you've ever tried to memorize something in a different language, this is the same as memorizing something without understanding it. It's, it just becomes like really, really hard and it becomes like foreign in your brain. You can't form those like connections to the thing. So to avoid this, you need to milk out the amount of understanding of the content you do. Now there's really only two ways you can understand content properly, right? There's one way which is called the Feynman technique. The Feynman technique is basically when you try and understand something as much as you can by like reading it or like testing yourself on it and then just try and explain it to someone else. This has been proven to be the best way of understanding content. And this has really helped me in my like GCSEs and stuff where honestly, like stuff like computer science, I didn't really understand. I would just like, what I used to do before I understood this, I would just like try and reread the stuff until I finally understood it. But this is the worst way to do this. Trust me when I say that if you try and explain the content to someone else, you will maximum, you will 10 X your understanding on that particular topic. The second way you can understand content better is through something called ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT, you've probably heard of it. If you, if you haven't, 
brother, you're living under some rock. It's basically like this AI chatbot thing that you can like ask questions to and stuff. Now, a lot of people our age use it for some like random shit, like <laughs> asking it how to make crystal meth or something, but we're gonna use it to understand content. So whenever you understand or you receive a piece of content that you need to learn, all you do is just type into ChatGPT, explain this topic to me as if I was like a 10 year old, even if you're not a 10 year old. I'm in A-levels and I still like ask, ask ChatGPT to explain something to me like I was a 10 year old, which I, I don't know, man. It, it, it's, it's okay, it's okay. It's not that deep. So with these two ways, basically, you should now have an understanding of the content before you start to memorize it, right? So if you want to explain explain to people like what you've learned from that content, you can use the find my technique. Or if you have social anxiety, you can just ask ChatGPT or something, right? The, the second main way to memorize content is using something called Anki. Now, Anki is a certain type of active recall. Remember I told you about like active recall and passive recall? It's a certain type of application that incorporates active recall in it. And basically what it is, it's like a flashcard application. Now, you've seen like flashcards, right? You write something on the like front of the flashcard and then you try to remember what's on the back of the flashcard. This is the same as that, but it's all online. Now, there's a lot of like active recall study techniques like blurting or mind maps, but I've found this to be like the best one. All you do, right, is you get Anki, the application, it's A-N-K-I. I think it's free to download on like laptops and stuff, but you need to pay money on Apple. But I definitely, like, if you are considering buying it on Apple, I would definitely like think of it as an investment rather than like an expense because you're gonna get better grades if you have it than if you don't, basically. So all you do is you make online flashcards on like the topic. If you, if you do like GCSEs and stuff, you make it using the specification which is like a document that basically says what you need to know for that topic. So you just make it using the specification and then you go through it every single day. Honestly, that's genuinely like all you need to do to memorize something in depth. I use Anki all throughout my GCSEs. And if you want to get my flashcards for Anki or the flashcard application, it's down below. It's the first link in bio. I was gonna like make a paywall for these flashcards, but then I just couldn't be asked. So you, you can get them for free. It's just the first li link in the bio. If you're doing the same subjects as me for GS GCSE, just download my um, just download my stuff and then just go through it and then you memorize everything for the exam. The third tip for memorizing content effectively is something called past papers. Now, past paper, uh, papers are basically the past versions of that exam that are usually online. So if you're doing GCSEs and stuff or like A-levels, you can just go to the exam board website so if you're doing AQA, you can go to the AQA website and then search your, let's say, maths paper one, and then search for the past like 2019 papers for that. Now, what I've seen, what I've seen is past papers make for a better understanding and memorization for content, because honestly, you don't just want to memorize the content at hand. You don't really care about memorizing every single word in the textbook. What you really need to do is apply it to different situations. And this is what past papers like enable you to do. If you go through a past paper, it's going to test you on memorization and it's going to test you on your understanding of the content, which is basically how a test would be in real life. So what I would uh, recommend you do is just milk out as many past papers from a certain subject as possible and do Anki and just understand the content and then you should be good to go for an exam. So these three main things are what you need to do to memorize and understand content to get good grades. Tip number four enjoy the subject. This is like a bonus tip, but I genuinely like recommend this tip more than any of these tips in the video. Like all of these tips are something you can do like physically, right? You can do the past papers, you can download the app of Anki and go through the flashcards every day. But enjoying the subject is something that not many people have, right? So if you're studying, let's say biology or like chemistry, it's always seen as like, a punishment to study the subject, if you get what I mean. So people are like, oh, I have to go revise for this. But if you can flip that and actually enjoy the subject of chemistry, you're gonna be ahead of like most of the people doing the subject because they're, they're seeing it as something to push off. They're seeing like revision for chemistry as something to push off. But if you can enjoy the subject, you're gonna be genuinely like one of the top 1% students because not many people enjoy the subject and actually like doing the subject. But if you can do this, you're gonna just automatically be better at it. 
So there's mainly two ways you can enjoy the subject more. One of them is by doing wider reading. So like if you like read other books about your subject or are like around your subject, you're gonna automatically like be more interested in that subject. But that's not really the thing I did to um, enjoy my subject more, mainly because I just don't like reading. This, the main way I like go ahead and beyond the specification for my subjects is by watching YouTube videos in specific. Now, for my subjects, I take an A-level, I take maths, further maths, computer science and physics. I can go on online and then just search for some random physics topic and then watch that video. And most of them are pretty interesting. I think I, I found this guy named like Veritasium or something. <laughs> he has like an exotic name, but he makes like really, really good physics videos, which are quite interesting. And if you can just watch and like binge watch some, uh, some of these videos, it's not even that hard to do. Like realistically, it's not that hard to do. All you have to do is just type the, type the subject you're doing and then just watch some random video in depth that goes beyond your spec. And what I've seen is this has this like weird effect on you wherein you just automatically perform better and you just enjoy the subject more because you're giving it more time outside of lesson to dedicate your life in like some way to that subject. I don't know how practical this tip is in real life, but I've genuinely seen some effects from this. So this just the TLDR of this entire entire tip is just go do some more wider reading about your specific subject, especially if you dislike it right now. With these four tips done, I think you should be equipped to be memorizing any sort of content and understanding any content you can get thrown at you and especially get good exam grades. I think a lot of people make memorization videos online, but don't really link it to the overall goal we have of getting good grades. Like people assume that all people want to do is just memorize content, but no, we want to get good grades out of that. So I think understanding is very, very fundamental for this. But also if you incorporate like the active recall tips I told you in this video, you're going to get good grades. That's all from me. I'll see you in the next one.